for the challenge. Let's do it. Let's do it. Another teaching game. Started playing three weeks ago and 15Q. Oh my gosh, it's so loud. The ding, ding, ding in the ear headphones. All right, so have a good game. Uh, hi, have fun. Uh, three weeks uh, for 15Q is pretty good. Uh, so let's see, what should 15Q work on? Still fighting in life and death until forever. Uh, <laughs> forever you'll be working on fighting in life and death. Uh, let's see if he knows some basic Josekis. Um, and let's check his direction of play. All right. Josekis and direction of play. Let's check his opening, and then when we get to the middle game, we'll check the fighting. Cats plays. You're back. Are you done streaming? Hmm. Right. Check Josekis. Uh, he should know this one, but let's double, let's make sure. Let's make sure he knows it. I forgot I was on Foxy, and that scared the crap out of me. Okay. All right. It's one Joseki. <laughs> yeah, I don't know Joseki. Uh oh. Uh oh. You gotta, you gotta know at least a few Joseki. You don't have to know all of them, but you have to know some basic ones. All right, if I go in, what do you do? Ooh, I should pick the Oh my gosh. That happened. <laughs> that happened. <laughs> that was from the tutorial series. If you guys watched it, you would know why this is red. <laughs> I need to fix that. Hold on. Uh let's do what should I what color should I do? Uh, gray. Give it a little color. It's pretty cool looking. night <laughs> which one should I do this one like a or b i've been doing a for a while i'm gonna switch to b i'm gonna switch it up i think uh the a is my favorite like uh this one's my favorite but i like changing that one i want to do some glass stones do glass that's all pretty uh so i have a weak group so i'm gonna run away So question for chat, what is your favorite type of ghost stones? Hello, a random badger. What is your favorite type of ghost stones? Personally for me, um, I've had several types. My favorite are the uh, double convex 
glass stones that are like a little bit skinny not the fat ones but the skinny ones uh i feel like those are really smooth and cool looking uh but i also have slate and shell stones and i think those are pretty cool too but i like with, with slate and shell i prefer the fat ones with glass uh i prefer the skinny ones but i i like the d double convex on both double convex glass yeah i really like the double convex glass i think they're really cool but slate and shell are very nice too uh but i prefer the fat slate and shell i don't know the exact sizes unfortunately i'm uh, i'm just not nerdy enough paper <laughs> paper <laughs> I have cardboard goat stones too. <laughs> I used to have Yunzi ghost stones, but they just get lost over time. They get lost to time. Every time I they like I moved them, I'd lose one or two, and they just got lost lost to time. All right, so we're going to force them to make a base. Make a base. Should I punish or no? Uh, I'm gonna punish because this will be a life and death problem, and we'll just, then we'll see how his life and death is. If we're gonna create a life and death problem. Ooh, let's see if we're gonna tell him to do 50 problems a day or 100 problems a day. Oh, he's gonna Tanuki? Oh, he's so brave. Where is he at? What was his username? Like, Indy? Nope, don't know just a key. Mm, all right. Uh, da -dum -da -dum. So viewers really liked uh, me teaching you. They would like to see more. So I am going, I am offering you a challenge get to 19k by next friday and i will give you um a couple lessons on stream sound good I think that'll be a really good incentive. I uh, I feel like if we give incentive, uh, single convex unity stones, <laughs> yeah, those are pretty nice. Uh, I feel like if we give new players incentive to improve or give them like challenges to meet that they can meet, it'll really help them improve and keep them here longer. Uh, and if we can do our best to help the new players stay in the stay in uh, the community. And not only will it attract more players because they're friends and stuff, but it'll also give us more teachers in the future, more players in the future, and just help build the guild world. So uh, anything that like uh, any strong player can do to like um, encourage new players, I think is a is a good thing. Um, I want a honey. I should have connected if I wanted a honey. I should have connected.
Oh well. He's gonna ignore his wake group. I'm gonna attack this. I'm gonna check this. Check. <laughs> check. You gonna do anything about it? Or you gonna ignore me? Hello, flowers, beta. How are you? We are checking in the life and death of this player. There is a way to live. Will he find it? All right. I gave him plenty of chances. Now, if I go here, it's pretty much gonna end the game. So let's go. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go here. Ooh, thank you for the follow, Hurricane nineteen twelve, and welcome to the insane world of Go. All right. I'm gonna give you Sente. What are you gonna do with it? Oh, my ears. My ears hurt from the headphones. go all right let's peep life and death problem number two <laughs> I, I people must like people who hate go problems must really hate playing me because i just set up go problems for them to solve on the board <laughs> during the game so if they if you like he hated go problems he was really hate me right now because i force a to do go problems <laughs> Challenge you, I'm watching your stream. Uh, there's a queue. There is a queue for teaching games. Before I say that, make sure he's not like a Don or something. What is it? Uh, oh, it's a she. Hi, Diana. Uh, is this the streamer? Is this the streamer that I was just watching? No, the streamer I was watching was a one Don. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a queue for teaching games. There's a queue for teaching games. Unless you're a streamer. Are you a streamer? Twitch.tv slash... Is it games slash go? Go. Directory slash game slash go. Okay. Uh, no, I don't think that was flowers. Okay. 
Uh, your flowers, was that flowers? Are you flowers beta? Are you flowers on here? Or my flower? Uh, if you want to join the queue to join the queue, type exponential mark join. And you'll automatically join the queue. I have a bot that does the queue for me. Uh, Twitch. Twitch, Twitch. The Q is for viewers. Uh, all right, solve it, <laughs> solve the problem. Yep, it's right, right there. Type slash or exponential mark join to join the queue for teaching games. As uh, I can't play favorites unless I have a good reason. Uh, just Q players. The teaching games for anyone that's a Q player. Yay, he solved it. Okay. Alright, I gotta give him some points. Uh, any, anyone that is a Q player can join the Q. The Q for Qs! It's the Q for Qs, guys! Join the queue for queues. Get some teaching games. Uh, how many do we have in the queue? We have two more people in the queue and a flowers join. That'll be three people in the queue. Woo! Getting a lot of teaching games in today, guys. A lot of teaching games today. Exclamation mark join. There you go. <laughs> That's technically third place because it starts at zero. I don't know why it starts at zero. Can I do like position plus one? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you're third in line for the teaching game. It's my last peach ring, guys. My last peach ring. Uh, yeah. Co? Is he gonna co? Nope. Uh, doink. This one was a little bit overplay. That's why I'm killing it. Uh, 
Uh, so weak groups is going to be first lesson, life and death, second, um, expanding eye space, third, um, Is this a good stopping point? I think this is a good stopping point. Let's resign. Thank you for the game. Thank you for the game. So let's go ahead and review this game. And I'm going to wait for Assassin to get back in stream. So... Uh, assassin and white let me know when you are back in the stream so that way I can start reviewing do, 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 it's a sleepy kitty sleepy kitty So cute. Did I wake you up? <sighs> Hello, assassin. All right, let's go ahead and review. Do 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 do. Uh, basics tells us open sides first. The left side's the most open, so I would play there because it's the widest side. So, uh, you could simply make a shamari. I did, I did. <laughs> you could play an, ex uh, an approach and then extension. Um, these two are most common. Uh, at your level, uh, you can play an extension too, like you did in the game, and that's also fine. Uh, but these two are more common. But it's also fine. However, the right side is not the biggest side because the left side is wider. So that one's a little bit bigger. Uh, then you tanuki. Mm, I don't recommend approach and tanuki until probably 5q plus. Simply because it's too complicated and you're defying the basic of ignoring weak groups. And you should not ignore weak groups when you're trying to learn the basics. When you're trying to learn the basics, weak groups first. So save your weak group. And then I'll go approach. So this was big, but I can attack the weak group immediately by playing right here. Uh, and then I can get some profit. But I decided to do this to see your Josegis. You did know this Josegi. That was perfectly fine. Uh, when you play an extension, you either want to go all the way, which is one space away. Or you just want to play a two space. In this case, the two space is way too small. Way, way, way too small. It's way too over-concentrated. So if you wanted to go, you would go here. However, I think the top side is not the biggest side, or the big move. The big move is going to be weak groups first, which technically you have a weak group right here. So you can go over here. And the second thing is open sides. Not really an open side. There's only like these two sides. Um, so you could kind of consider them an open side, but it's hard to say. But, other, uh, but you could go here. And then after that, it's largest framework, which I think is Black's. So Black could build up the largest framework here, or maybe play a shoulder hit and build a mile. Uh, but otherwise, I think you should defend your weak group and then build. Top side is a really small side because it's very small space in between. So I approached the Joseki in this uh, kind of Chinese shape is to play knight's move. White goes in, I block, you block, connect, take the base, play an extension, jump to surround, push, 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 peep. Get to my space, block, fix, 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 and then black and snooky or surround. Uh, what is a framework? What is a framework? Um, a framework is this. This is not territory. 
That is because it can be invaded. Why can play? Um, why can play? Why can play here and live? 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 It can be invaded. Now I'm not saying it's good for white to invade, but it, it's not points yet because of that reason. So a framework is kind of the outline of an area. So a framework is kind of like the outline of where your points are going to be or where you have control over. So this would be a framework. Um, it's kind of your, like your foundation for points. If your opponent ignores you too many times, you might turn all of it into points. And now, doot, doot, doot. Now you have points. Uh, but that's what a framework is. A framework is just an outline of territory. Okay, so I came in. I showed you the normal Joseki, but you don't know it. That's fine. So what do you do when you don't know? Well, the first thing is uh, you check for your own weaknesses. You don't really have that many weaknesses. So the second thing is you attack your opponent. You attack by first, unsettling. Second, surround. So you chose to go for the unsettling and to take my base. That's fine, but that move would be here. Or here. Uh, this one, unfortunately, does leave you with a concentrator right there, and it damages this stone. So I prefer this one. Uh, that way, if you play the exact same sequence, you can make a base. Or uh, not a base. This is not a base. You can make some ice base. Uh, so I'll this one, and then maybe white plays this way. Uh, and then black can connect. And then white can attack. Unsettling. Uh, so if you look in the top right, white has white has a weak group because there is this white stone has no support. So when you have a stone with no support, you need to make a base. A base is a small framework that is efficiently surrounding space. This space will be used to make eyes, so we call it eye space. So a base is efficient eye space. So if you look, white has made efficient eye space or space to make eyes. That is a base. It is very difficult to attack a group with base. And it's very easy to live if you have a base. So unsettling means to take the base or ice base away from your opponent and force them to run away. Because if they don't have ice base, they can't make eyes. So their only option is to run away to connect to living groups or make eyes in the center, which is really hard. So when you unsettle, you're pretty much taking the ice base away from them um, and then trying to surround, chase and surround for profit. So here, um, you would be taking the ice space. Ice space is usually on the third line or a combination of the third and fourth line. Uh, ice space is space on the side that you're surrounding for a base. So for example, this is pretty much one eye because it's the bulky five. One, uh, one two, three, four, five. So this knight's move is actually already one eye, and potentially two. So that already has half a base, because it's one eye. This group is practically alive. So it has a very good base, because it's almost completely alive. Uh, this group stone has no eye space and no eyes, so it's unsettled. So unsettled groups need to either make a base or run away. Uh, second line moves are generally not good unless you're stealing something. So up here, white was stealing the corner or trying to steal the corner. This move is not stealing anything from white, so it's better to play, be played on the third line. Uh, this one was just to get the forcing moves and cut off the A stone. If I unsettle you, it'll be easier for me to live. So that's why I did it. Uh, here, I disconnect. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, defending this side is just points because the A stone is the group and has B and C as Mii, but the D stone doesn't have a base yet. So I think it's weaker than A, which does have a base. So I think you should defend the D stone here or maybe here to attack. Uh, this one was very aggressive and does keep the corner and keep me out of the corner, but it does let me come back and attack you on the left if I so choose. Like, I could immediately go right here. Now, you can connect right here, and that's fine. So maybe uh, I'll unset cut you off and unsettle you for defense. Uh, so I ran away. You defended. And then I played this move. This move looks like an endgame move, but what it's really doing is disconnecting uh, the black group so that way you are unsettled. So, because when you're unsettled, you can't really kill me because you'll be trying to live while I'm trying to live, and uh, it'll make my life easier if you're unsettled. Uh, so what I expected you to do was to play a two-space jump because one stone jumps two to make a base. Uh, and that way, you would have a base, and then I could easily make a base as well by killing a stone. Uh, and then we would both live, and happy life. But you didn't, so I decided to start surrounding you. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to start making... When you need eyes, you need tiger's mouths. Um, here, if you can run with a one-point jump, it's a little bit better. But it's uh, this is minor stuff because you are getting surrounded. All right, so I surround you. You need to block this and make your base. It's very important. This is your eye space. This is like your life right now. This is how you are alive, is this space. But you ignored, and this you ignored a weak group because this group has no eyes as long as I can walk in. You have no base, which means you have no eyes, and you're getting surrounded. If you have no base, no, uh, no eye space, and you're getting surrounded, then you are potentially going to get, uh, going to die if you don't do something about it. So you need a base and get some eye space. Uh, so that is why I chose to cut you off, was to attack your weaker peer and the weaker peer, and to force you into a life and death problem. Uh, you decided to invade, which is fine. This is Joseki, but uh, the Joseki is here. This is Joseki. Uh, this one is okay. Uh, you want to connect. Don't ever make this tiger's mouth to the first line because the peep right here threatens the cut and your eye shape is really bad. Um, when you run away, this is very important. When you run away, you run away to the center. You run away to the center. That is where it's really hard to kill stuff. The center is really hard to kill stuff. So when something runs away, it runs to the center. When you chase something, you want to first unsettle it and then prevent it from getting to the center. So unsettle it first so you can chase it and make profit and then surround it by keeping it from the center or from its uh, supporting stones. So when you run away, you run towards the center. Running to the edge like this, assuming that you have no, uh, assuming that there's no base, um, running to the edge, running to the edge, I'm going to get a lot of thickness while you're running to the edge. This thickness will radiate on the whole board for the rest of the game. So this is very good profit for white. You do not want to give your opponent thickness that is so uh, like this because it's very powerful and stronger players know how to use this and you will eventually as well. Uh, you'll learn how to use this probably in single digit Q. Um, I think at 12Q you start learning how to use Moyos. You're pretty much introduced to Moyos at 12Q and 11Q. Uh, so when you get to single digit Q you definitely know how to use thickness and you'll understand that thickness is very, very valuable. So, when I attacked you, I'm supposed to play this way and then chase you out and then I run out. But I thought this would be too powerful for a teaching game. So I just forced you to make a base because I wanted you to make a base and just live. Uh, and then I saved my weak group and I'm happy, right? Because my weak group's out to the center. Uh, can't be surrounded in like uh, two moves, uh, two or three moves. So I'm happy. But this move is too far 
uh, of a jump to support your weaker. Because one stone jumps two, two stones high jumps three, three stones high jumps four, and four stones or more plays an extension, which is a five space jump. An extension is a five space jump. So here, um, this one is a four space jump, but you're only one stone high. When I mean high, I mean towards the center. So you're only one stone high, so it's very easy to disconnect you. When I disconnect you, neither group has a base because until you get this move, you don't have a base. Neither group has a base, and now you have two weak groups that are not connected, so it's very easy for white to attack you. Uh, so here you went and made a base in the corner. That's perfectly fine. Uh, and I showed you the Joseki. That's the Joseki. Uh, yeah, so this move is bad for eye space. It's better to connect because the eye space is better. Um, if you play this, this A3 stone does not give you an eye at A4. So it does not help your eye space at all. Uh, so the peep, when they play a Tiger's Mouth to the first line, the peep is really powerful. So you just want to connect. All right. And then I played this. I should have connected. I should have played this connection. How do you calculate that it's one stone high? Uh, let's draw a line towards the center. There's one stone. There's no stone. So it's one stone high. So this one, it's one stone high. This one it's one stone high. Uh, knight's moves don't count, but diagonals do count. So if there's a stone here, that would be two stones high towards the center. Uh, but knight's moves don't count because they don't support uh, in the disconnect. To... The way you determine how far you can jump is you want to jump as far as you can without getting disconnected. So... When I play a jump, so if you go here, I can't disconnect you, but it's very slow. So I want to play here. Okay. Can't disconnect because you connect over or under. If I go here, can't disconnect because you connect under and you can uh, surround over. Uh, if you go here, now I can disconnect because now you have no way to connect. All right. So one stone jumps two. Okay. So now it's two stones high. So if I go here, can't disconnect. If I go here, the three space jump now black can play a diagonal and you can see that two immediately blocks white from running away so black can surround and the stones will die on the inside so you can connect you can also play this type of move or this type of move to connect so two stones jumping over three can connect but if you jump over four i can go here and now you cannot stop me. You can't. Uh, you can't cut this. Uh, yeah. Here, 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 here. Uh, nope, 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 nope. I'm being stupid. Uh oh. Glossy's failing on stream. That never happens. Uh, there, 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 there. Then there. There, 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 there. There we go. And there, and then run. And you're disconnected. Okay, it's a complicated variation. Okay, there's a lot of variations, and surrounding stones always change it. And that's just one idea. You could also think about right here, uh, and then right here. Uh, but the point is, the stones high change the variation uh, to determine if you're connected or not, or if you can connect or not. And that's something you'll study later. Right now, you just want to know the rule of thumb is however many stones high... You want to jump that many plus one. You want to jump over that many plus one. So if you're two stones high, you jump over three. If you're one stone high, you jump over two. If you are three stones high, you can jump over four. And four more is an extension. An extension is a five space jump. That means you jump over five spaces. Uh, so that's how you determine how far you can uh, how, how far you can jump. And that's hopefully that made sense on how high you are. <clears throat> how many stones high you are um yeah, here was good because you're expanding your eye space i surrounded you here i should unsettle you and keep and then surround you like this block you from the center this is the ideal way to attack but i wanted to see your life and death uh so you expanded eye space you really need to block your eye space and then expand it like here or here 
You need to expand your ice phase. So you did do that, but you needed to block it. Because at any point in time, I can just take it away. So you really got to block your ice phase. Here, if white plays right here, black's dead. Because there's no ice phase, and black is completely surrounded. So you have to play this move. And then you can play um, the eye. And if I cut, you make two eyes. And I can't play right here because it's self-Atari. And that'd be two eyes. All right. <laughs> doot, doot. You did block. That was good. And you lived. That was good. Here, I peeped to show you the bad shape. And then I surrounded you. I played here. And you blocked. Uh, corner shapes are scary. So when you're uncertain, make a tiger's mouth. When you're uncertain of the life and death in the corner, specifically... Make a tiger's mouth. It's it's a lot safer. Uh, does this tiger's mouth actually work? Doot, 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 doot. Yes. This is a live. This is a living shape. Okay, so this tiger's mouth would live. This one, if I go here, we get a thousand year co. I do not want to explain what this shape is. If you want to know about the thousand year co, please Google it. I don't want to explain it. It's really complicated. Um, but it's basically, it's a Seki. It's a co no one wants to start. If you want to learn more, Google it. But this is a thousand year co. And I did not think that was good teaching material. <laughs> so I went here to give you a life and death problem and you solved it. Perfect. You did good. Let's move on. <laughs> we don't want to get into that. Uh, but when you, when in doubt, you can make a tiger's mouth in the corner. It's good eye space. All right, so I go here to block the corner and attach to your stone. Then you chose to invade. I thought this was a little greedy considering you're weak on the outside. So, okay, fine. You give up the outside, you take my corner. That's an exchange. But then you tried to live with the outside after you just cut yourself off on the outside. That is not a good combination. If you want to save the outside, <clears throat> save the outside here, jump, get some forcing moves, and then Sabaki. If you don't know what Sabaki is, don't worry about it. Um, you can look that up when you're single digit Q uh, or Google it, but it's not that important at this level. Uh, it's basically, you can either defend the outside or you can sacrifice the outside and take the inside. So here, you play Knight's move to live and get some eye space and try and live. Tiger's mouths, on, tiger's mouths in the corner are very good for life. Um, but basically, something to try to live. Something to try to live, right? If you wanted to try to live, you should try to live. Uh, but then you try to live on the outside, which makes R3 lose its meaning. Because now R3 just dies. Um, maybe you could do this. Uh... Now this is dead. This is dead. Okay, I think it just dies. This one was a mistake by white. White should go here. Because even if you cut, I can kill these two stones uh, against the edge. So this one was a mistake. Black can go here, 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 and then here. And this is a co for life. So white made a mistake. Mm -hmm. But again, connect or uh, connect or tiger's mouth. There's no eyes on the first line because you're not surrounding anything. So how, there can't be eyes on the first line. Um, there is magic at the one two point. You'll hear that phrase, magic at the one-two point. That's a thing in life and death. But this is not the one-two point. It's just the first line. So I can peep, and your eye space is very small. And you're dead. Uh, and after this group dies, white has a thickness, phase, like radiating over the whole board. And large area right here, large area right here, and a large area right here, and some area right here. Uh, pretty much white's already won the game. 
And that's why I thought it was a good point to resign. Lessons to take from this game. Lots of shapes. So I'd recommend watching it again in the future. Lots of shapes. Lots of life and death shapes. Uh, concepts on how to make a base. Uh, and stuff like that. Um, expanding eye space. All these little concepts. Uh, hopefully you'll remember them. And if you need to, you can always watch this video again. Um, the second thing I recommend is really start doing life and death problems. Um, I don't know if you're watching the teaching game earlier, but I recommended a lot of life and death problems. Go to puzzles, elementary life and death, 899 problems. I recommend doing all of these. What is this? I don't know. Uh, dink. Yeah, I recommend doing all of these. This will really help you understand uh, how to make eyes. Yeah. Doot, doot, doot. Um, yeah. Hopefully you found that helpful. And hopefully you enjoyed the game. Thank you for playing. All right, who's up next? Uh, I am going to close the queue for today. So my flower will be the last teaching game today. So we have this guy and two more. So we have three more teaching games, uh, and then that'll be it for the stream. Yep, thanks for playing. All right, I need I need another water, guys. So I will be right back. Uh, we are just waiting for El Elangulo. Elangulo. Okie dokie. Lolo Bellano. Elangulo. Alrighty. Get the information. A hey, thank you. Okie dokie. Challenge. Let's go. up the counter two thirty-five done Cheater in's back yay 
Reverser and friends family. Reverser, sir. Reverser and friends family hour. What is that? Hi, have fun. All right, now we're in the single digit Q range. I'm really curious what that is. <clears throat> All right. What is this? What is happening with this one? Eleven AM to two PM, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But it's Thursday. Oh, it's not live. Now live. The fifteen to twenty Q, cool. I'll review games of fifteen to twenty Q. Uh looks like he'll stream tomorrow. All right, so let's uh let's go ahead and follow him. So we can uh, see him when he's live. Most recent video, none. Maybe it's a new channel. Someone's gonna start streaming soon. I don't know. <clears throat> Do you guys know anything about it? I don't know anything about it. I really like that Halloween board. That's so cool. I really want to know how she did it. Can someone ask her how she did it and like let me know? I really want to know how she did it. I mean, look at that. She has zombie ghost stones and everything. That's so cool. That is so cool. I really want to know how she did it. So she just hacked it. <laughs> but yeah, be right back in five minutes. So she just hacked it, guys, basically. <laughs> she edited the the fonts, uh, or the graphics, I think, in the folders in Foxy or something. I don't know. I don't know. But she basically just hacked it. <laughs> I guess. It's not something I can do, I think. He doesn't know Joseki. See, it's not just uh, 15 Qs. 9 Qs don't either. <laughs> it's just different Josekis they don't know. Lolo Bileno. Two bronze trophies. Uh, 
you play stronger opponents a lot. Hmm, not bad, not bad. Just creeping around his profile here. So, I'm curious, what is everyone's rank in chat today? Because I know we had a lot of new people come in from the other stream. Uh, so, what is everyone's what is everyone's rank in chat today? Eleven Q. Cool, cool. I have a mo yo. Look at that mo yo. It's so glorious. All right, 10, 20, maybe 30 points for white. Uh, 6, 8, 10, 15, 25, 28. 19 to 20 Q. Cool, cool. Used to be 9 Q. One on hiatus for months. I haven't been losing a lot. Uh oh. <laughs> Don't want to do that. Do some go problems and watch some videos. That's the quickest way to get your brain back into it and then just start practicing. Then just start practicing and practicing and practicing. Go problems, watch some uh, basics videos, and then start practicing. You'll get back into it. You'll get it again. No worries. Ugh. He's so cute. The kitty is cute. How to learn Joseki? I don't know any. Um. One second. Okay. You want to go to uh, do, 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 not my website. I don't have Joseki there. PS Wall Theory. You want to check out this website. Ah, uh, yeah, you got to play. You got to play. Give yourself a challenge and lose 10 games a week. It's really hard to do. I'm not going to lie. It's really hard. Um, PS Wall Theory is a pattern searching database as well as a pro game database. What I would do is pick your favorite opening that you want to learn and then look at pro games that play that opening. Put the pattern in and then look for pro games that play that opening and then see what Joseki's the pros play in that opening. And just learn those Josekis first. And then pick a different opening, learn those Josekis. Pick a different opening, learn those Josekis, etc., etc. Uh, when you need to look up Joseki patterns, you can check out josekipedia.com. But I feel like wall theory is more useful since you need to know when to use the Josekis, not just what the Josekis are. So you need to learn when to use the Josekis, as, uh, and then you can learn what the variations are. Uh, so I think start with uh, reviewing just the first 50 moves of a pro game in your favorite opening and learn all the Josekis in that opening. And that's uh, my advice on how to learn Josekis. And you learn them one at a time. And that we also learn like direction of play and stuff like that. Hopefully that will help. 
I have to ask. Um, this may be a personal question. If it is, uh, then just say you don't want to say. Uh, but I did notice the profile picture was a female. So are you a female Go player? If so, that would be really cool. And my life, uh, my, uh, my life, yeah, she is my life, but my wife would love to uh, to maybe be friends with you. Or, okay, I would love for my wife to be friends with you if you are a fellow female Go player. <laughs> I can't English. I don't know. Um, but yeah, because uh, female Go players are so rare and far and few between. They should be treasured, guys. <laughs> but anyway my wife also um plays go every now and then periodically mostly because i do and she loves me and she wants to love what i love <laughs> but <laughs> she is currently like a 12 q and uh if i can get her some friends to play with i think it would be great cool cool yeah uh, you're actually around her level you might be a little bit stronger than her so i should tell her to like send you a message and maybe play some games with you she works. Uh, she works um, a lot this season, because yeah, it's almost like a level. So it's pretty close. It's pretty cool. Um, she works a lot this season, um, this quarter of the year, I guess, because October, Thanksgiving, and uh, Christmas are, are coming up. So her work schedule is really crazy because she works at a costume store. Um, but I will definitely let her know when she gets some free time, um, especially on stream. Maybe you can play her. That'd be, I think that'd be a lot of fun. If you can read, though, you'll beat her. <laughs> she can't read for anything. Oh, my gosh. I wish that woman could read. Um, but she knows basics better than probably this entire chat. <laughs> she's heard me teach for so long. Uh, she's heard me talk about Go for so long. Her basics are probably better than most people in the chat. But her reading is so bad. She has the reading of a 20Q and the basics of a 1Don. Or no, maybe not a 1Don. A basics of like a 5Q and then reading of like a 20Q. It's really impressive. The gap in like her knowledge. <laughs> it's what happens when you only watch your husband play Go or talk, talk about Go and never actually play yourself. Do you stream at all? I ask because I want to promote Go, and I feel like we need more gamer girls. <laughs> See, there's one. And look, she already has 18 views. I, I bet you because she's female. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> it's very sexist, but like if you look at the Twitch community, there's so many comments about gamer girls, uh, and we just don't have them in Go. And I'm like, maybe we should just hire a bunch of pretty women to play Go, and that will grow the Go community. Yeah, basic is really important. What do you guys think? Should we just hire a bunch of, like, beautiful females? Uh, and I teach a lot of basics, but I can't make you read. Reading is not something you can teach. Reading is definitely not something you could teach. So, reading can only be improved by the person. I can tell you exercises to improve your reading i can tell you how to approach reading but i cannot make you read i cannot make you better at reading that is one thing a teacher cannot do uh the only thing that um i think is like one of the most important things but the only thing a teacher cannot do is like improve your reading a big brother or survivor type <gasps> what Uh, reading is visualizing stones. So, like, if I play here, he plays here. Or if he plays here, I play here. What is what is going to happen? Um, mistyped. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's basically, like, visualizing stones. So, for example... Um, when I read, let's go back here. When I read, this is just an example. In my head, I'm saying if I go here and he goes here, then I can keep pushing. But if he plays the Hane and I play here, I have two cutting points. So maybe that will come up uh, and play because if he plays here, Atari, 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 I can see this in my head. This is a little bit much for beginner readers, but this is what basically you work up to. 
So I decided to play a one point jump in the game because I read the cuts. I saw that the cuts were a problem and that's basically what I do in my head. How do you do that? How do you start reading? Well, first you need shapes, okay? So when you review pro games or when you watch lectures or when you read books or when you see common patterns, you see common shapes. And you, there's also a famous, uh, I say famous, a really popular Go lecture on the shapes in Go and when to use them by Dison. I can actually link that to you guys. That is going to be on my website. Uh, no, it's not on my website. Dang it. Is it? Is it? Maybe it's, I hope it's on my website. Uh, videos. Dison, 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 Dison. Oh, no. I don't have it on my website. It's because it's not my video. So Dison Shape Lecture. There it is. Cute. This is a, a lecture on a lot of shapes and go. It's not all the shapes, but it's a lot of them. A lot of common shapes. Um, so first you want to have your instinct of what shapes to play. Once you have an idea of shapes to consider, so moves to consider, so first you it's your turn. You say, what is my goal? Am I going to defend something? Am I going to attack something? Uh, am I going to build something? Am I going to reduce or invade something? You figure out your goal first. Once you have your goal, then you decide, um, you have to decide to plan. Okay. So uh, you establish your goal. Then you say, what moves are possible to accomplish this goal? From that, you rely on your experience and instincts to give yourself a, a few moves to try and read out. The reason you have to do that is because it is not possible to read every single move with the limited amount of time we have. We cannot picture every stupid move on the board because there's way too many positions on the board to read every single one. So we use our instincts to tell us that, okay, maybe this move, 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 maybe a tanuki. We, we have to narrow that down to what we think is the best shape. And then we read each one. We say, if I play here, uh, and my opponent plays here, I play here, my opponent plays here, I can play here. That's like like one, two, three, four, five moves. That's five moves. Uh, but I also check branches. So you have to check the branches. It's very important. Check the branches. So if I play here, maybe my opponent plays here. I play here, my opponent plays here. I play here, I cut. And then I check all the branches. And once I check all the branches, I have successfully read this move out and I find, pick the best branch and I visualize in my head what the best branch looks like for this move. Then I read the next move. What does this move look like? I go here, he goes here, I go here, he goes here, I go here, he goes here. So maybe this work, uh, and then I visualize that one. And then I pick maybe one more, uh, this one. So usually I pick around two or three on average, but when I'm doing deep reading, I'll pick like as many as four or five. And then I'll read them as far as I can. For you guys, I would just recommend reading three moves deep with three moves. With, so one, two, three, and read all the branches. So as many as you can see, okay? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so that's probably enough. You pick the best one. What do you think is the best one for black? You visualize that one. You compare the results. Um, you compare the results of what you've read, and then you figure out which one accomplishes your goal, the original goal, the best. That is how you make a very, um, uh, that is how you make a good move without just guessing or just playing by instincts. A lot of player play a lot of players play by instinct. But what I just did was pretty much tell you how to make a very solid and very powerful and very good move. Now it's a lot to do, but if you are just reading three moves and, um, and you do that all those steps and you do them a lot, you can find the goal pretty much instantaneously. You can give yourself moves to check almost instantaneously. Then you can read those within like a minute or two, and then you can judge within a few seconds. Maybe some judgment calls are a little bit difficult and you just have to pick your best one, but reading is the most time consuming, but the rest is almost instantaneous. And then if you can speed up your reading by doing hundreds of Go problems, uh, you can speed up your stone visualization uh, to be very quick and very effective and efficient. Um, then you can visualize the positions, compare the results, and figure out which one accomplishes your goal the best. And you have to improve your instinct and judgment to compare results. Uh, and that will give you uh, the ability to make very good moves uh, pretty much very quickly. 
Um, and it's all about speeding up your ability to do that and then reading deeper. So once you speed up that entire process, so I can do that uh, process for three moves. I can do that in maybe 20 seconds. I can read uh, three moves deep. Three, but that's because I've done it thousands of times. So you have to start somewhere. Um, in tournaments, I spend several minutes reading like 10 moves or even 15 moves deep. And I have to read all the branches and read the best branch that I can, or best moves that I can do. And even, I don't do it perfectly, guys. I do not do it perfectly. But uh, at Dawn level, in tournaments, you read about 10 or 15 moves. Online, we read about five moves. We're lazy. Uh, online, we only read about five moves deep. Uh, we just read it accurately and very quickly. Uh, so the way you learn that is you have to start doing it. You improve your uh, you improve your basics from uh, lectures, videos, books. You improve your shapes from pro games, um, lectures and stuff, uh, watching and seeing and experiencing. Uh, you improve your reading by stone visualization, like Go problems, um, life and death problems in general. You improve your judgment from experience and study. Um, and then you put them all together and improve your game. And that's pretty much how you improve your reading. It sounds like a lot, but you just take it step by step. Just take it step by step. And it will add up very quickly and it'll be good. So I think this game's pretty much done. I want to see how he deals with this. I want to see how he deals with this. And then I'll resign. Basically, to play a good move, four steps. Goal, instinct, read, judge. It's my classy approach. It's on the classy approach, guys. <laughs> if you look at the classy approach, it's in there. Uh, steps in a move. Goal, instinct, read, judge. <laughs> that is how you make a good move. <laughs> Step number four. <laughs> uh, uh, to play the goal, where's my weakness? Where's my opponent's weakness? Yeah, that's definitely a weakness. Uh, where's my opponent's weakness? Big move, and then most valuable move. Um, and then how to attack. Make, take a base, surround, run away, reduce, expand, die space, play the vital point. And these are some general ideas right at the bottom. It's a classy approach, guys. Classy approach. It's what I. It's what I. Uh, it's what I preach. It's what I teach. It's what I teach. All right, it is 4.06. What time did she say she was going to get off? So she went in. Uh, when did she go in? Oh, my gosh. I was half asleep when she went to work this morning. Um, she went in pretty early. She went in, she went in like 8. Yeah, she went in like 8. So, yeah, she should be home any minute. Mrs. Clausius should be home soon, I hope. I might be a delusional, but I hope she will be home very soon. Um, maybe we can get her to play Flower. <laughs> That'd be great if uh, Mrs. Clausius and um, uh, my Flower plays. Uh, and then I can just review your guys' game afterwards. Doink. Alright, we're going to resign now. Thank you for the game. Review this game. Okie dokie. Put up here. 
All right, let me know when you are in here. I uh, forget your, here you are. Okay, I forgot what your other username was. Um, you are here, cool. So let's go ahead and review. Doot, doot, doot. Um, this is fine. Chinese is more common, but who cares? Doot, 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 doot. The Joseki is to go here, 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 get a ladder breaker, I defend, and then you can actually approach and it becomes Moyo versus Moyo. So, uh, but the one is the Joseki move. This one is too good for white because of the double honey. Uh, Pencer, yup, 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 yup. Uh, your move's not a mistake. I just want to show you another idea. This is another Joseki for you, you to study if you want. This is another Joseki if you want to learn it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, usually you don't bump your own head, though. Usually you just fix. I fix, and then you tanuki. That way there's still an open skirt. Bumping your own, uh, bumping your own head, like in the game, is usually bad shape. Because you have bad liberties. And that's what led to the double honey. Was because you bumped your own head. Uh, da 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 yup, yup. Um, white's winning, right? So if we look at open corners, done, open sides, there's no open side that doesn't have a stone in it. So now we should be at largest framework. So white should have largest framework. So what about reducing while developing? Or just reducing in general. Because white has a lot of influence. And I feel like a normal move is not going to cut it. Because this area is the biggest framework. You should probably do something about it. Uh, this is fine. This is not okay. Uh, we are 9Q. So if you've ever played Handicap Go, you know that with this pincer, the Joseki is here. This is good if white cannot make a good extension. Um, and then go higher low. High for pressure. <clears throat> white can only play a one space jump. White plays, doot, 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 and then runs away. This is a Joseki. If you play a one space jump high, take the base, run away, Joseki. Uh, yeah. Kick is the Joseki when it's uh, pincered. This was very easy for white to live. Surrounding doesn't do anything because white's already alive. Because white can live very easily um, in this in this area. Right? It's very easy for white to live in this area. So there's really not any pressure on me. I jumped out because it furthered my moyo. For example, later I can play like this and you can see I develop a large moyo. That's why I jumped out because it didn't want you to surround me in Sente. But if we look at what black gained from A and what white gained from B, white gained more than black by defending and that's not good. Uh, so if you wanted to surround, it would be here. Because you don't want the defensive move for white to further the Moyo. So here would be how you surround if you wanted to. I think this might be okay to try. Uh, you could also try a jump, jump, shoulder hit. This way you reduce while building. And this is a common tactic when it's Moyo versus Moyo. Uh, peeps are bad. Don't peep. Peeps are bad unless they're good. You have to have a very special reason if you're going to play a peep because peeps are good for your opponent. 
it fixes their shape. So peeps are good or bad. They're good for your opponent. They're so they're bad for you unless you have a special reason. There is no special reason for black here, so there's no good to do it. No way to do it. Yeah. Just reduce. I mean, you have points. It's not like black doesn't have points. Black has points like right here, right here, uh, right here, right here, and right here. All you have to do is just push. It's okay. If the Moyo was so ginormous, it would already be game over. Right? If you didn't have enough points, it would already be game over. But all you have to do is just reduce and build your own points, and you're fine. That's a very easy way to handle a large Moyo. It just reduce while building points. And then the point difference isn't that large. Uh, here, you develop your own points, but this is not the largest area. So I played on the largest area. You did not, so I get more than you. Uh, and that's all that was. It's just I played a bigger move than you did. Here, I'm just playing a bigger move. And now the Moyo is out of control. <laughs> now it's just out of control. Now I have a clear advantage. So now you need to start going crazy. Right? Now you need to just break in. Because white has a clear advantage. If you count the points, white is ahead by quite a bit. And it's almost game over. So black needs to do something a little drastic. This is too slow. Too slow. It's only points. It's not the biggest area. After this, it's game over. There's no way to win after I seal it off. This was just to see how you'd respond. Um, this is how you want to play. Because there's no way out for white. It's just some end game. Uh, this one I was able to trick you and break in. Yeah, and after that, it's extra game over because you lost your points. Yeah, with this, you have to be very careful. Um... Nothing white can do here other than some end game. Mm -hmm. White's dead. Uh, all right. So, lesson here is one, you need to play on the biggest framework. Not just not just the big sides. You have to like after the open sides are done, or after the open sides have something in them. You need to play on the largest framework. If it's yours, build it. If it's your opponent's, reduce or invade it. And if it's a moyo, then you can usually reduce it while building your own, or reduce it while gaining, or reduce it while attacking. You can usually reduce while doing something else. That's usually the best reduction. Uh, and that's a very easy way to deal with the Moyo. Uh, it'll be a good balance. Yeah, you won't destroy all the points, but as long as you have territory, which you do, it's okay. It's a good balance. Um, when you attack... Eh, the attacking wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, there's a few Josekis that you could have improved on, but otherwise, it wasn't that big of a deal. Peeps are bad, unless they're good. But mostly, it was largest framework and uh, reduce the Moyo. I think those are the two main points in this game. The rest was was just some shape stuff. Uh, okay, but hopefully you found that helpful. Oh, oh, and the last thing. Your mentality at the end of the area is big, but I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to build my own. Not good. That's not going to help you win. If you're losing, you have to realize that you're losing and you need to do something about it. You can't just go play your own thing and do your own thing because you're still going to be losing. If you don't do anything to change the difference... You're still going to be losing. So I didn't like this mentality at the end where you're just, eh, I'm just play normal, even though I'm losing. I thought that was too soft. Too soft of a mentality. Um, all right. Thanks for playing. Hope you enjoyed. Next. Next, next, next. A random badger. I need to get, like, on here. 14 Q. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, you need to play more people your level. 
This graph is very pink. It should be balanced. It's supposed to be balanced. Though I say that, look at my graph. <laughs> my graph is probably ridiculous. <laughs> Profile. <laughs> <laughs> it's broke. I broke it in it. Oh my gosh, look at the purple. All these resignations. You guys are too strong. Oh my gosh. Freaking load. There we go. Um, I'll see. Even I'm even. Holy crap. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, 23 losses versus weaker opponents. Um, yeah, it should be even. Should be even. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, oh, you're a question. You were a question mark for a while. Oh, you haven't even played 50 games. Okay. All right. Uh, but I do like to point out that one thing that is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine, I'm sorry if it offends you, but a little bit of a pet peeve is I don't particularly like seeing people who only play stronger players than themselves because why should us stronger players teach you if you're not willing to teach others why should people that are rank or two stronger than you give you that challenge if you're not willing to give that challenge to others i'm not pointing you out specifically uh, i understand this is a new account and this is not pro this is probably not a habit but i do like letting people know that it is one thing that i don't like seeing um is a lot of uh, this where you're, uh, the, you're not playing a lot of weaker opponents, but you are playing a lot of stronger opponents. Share share the teaching. I'm teaching to spread go, but that also means you should also teach to spread go in the future eventually as well. Um, just to help. That's how the go community grows. Uh, I feel like it's a little selfish to only play stronger players than you. I feel like it's a little selfish but that's just one of my pet peeves, and I'm uh, sorry if you don't like it. It's just <laughs> it's just one of my pet peeves. It's uh, just my opinion. Um, you're free to disagree, uh, but it is one thing that, as a teacher, I'm not a big fan of. So, but it's no worries. I'm not holding against you. I'm nothing against you. No worries. I'm just letting you guys know. Uh, I did like that about KGS. Is if you had a squiggly line. Um, I would like never teach you. <laughs> I would never teach squiggly lines or play squiggly lines because I'm like, I'm not going to give a teaching game to someone who never plays people who give themselves. Um, and that's one thing I did like about KGS is they had that. Uh, but this is a new account, so it's completely fine. It's just a new account. But if you had like 100 games and like 80 of them was against stronger players, I might be a little uh, hesitant to give you a teaching game. <laughs> So uh, just so you guys know, that's that's just a uh, that's just one of my uh, opinions, I guess. Hi, have fun. We should switch back to OGS. Fourteen Q. You're about to learn, Moyo. Uh, could just be playing those who popped up as the other games. Yeah, uh, on OGS, it's a lot more difficult to control that uh, than it is on KGS. KGS had a lot more people back in the day. But when I was teaching on KGS, it was before OGS was out there. Um, so when I taught on KGS, it was pretty much the only place to teach Go was on KGS. But now it's between KGS and OGS. And OGS just is easier for me to teach students. People can just send me their profile and chat. People can send me their games to review and chat. I can just send me game links and URLs. And I've messaged uh, KGS several times because I I learned Go uh, using KGS. So I do have a lot of uh, nostalgia with them. Uh, and I do like to help them out. And I love OGS too. I mean, I love helping OGS grow as well. Um, but I've told them, I was like, I, I use OGS to teach, and it's not because I don't like KGS, but um, rather it's because KGS, people can't just send me their games and I can just open it in a URL. Uh, it's not it's not convenient for them to give me their games like it does on OGS. Uh, but, yeah. Just, you know, 
classy problems. <laughs> this is a very territorial game. Uh, but I would like to t think that White has a slight advantage. Well, I would if I had Comey. I would if I had Comey. Um, right now it's probably even. White would have a... Uh, Black's supposed to have a little bit more on the board than White. And White has Comey because of it. So if Black doesn't get that little extra bit, then White has an advantage with Comey. Um, and the way to get that extra bit is just to make sure that you have a combination a global combination, and you'll have more than your opponent on the board. So against Comey, it'll be even. This is the largest area, or the largest framework, right now. So open sides are done, so now we play the largest framework. Uh, Fortune cues don't know this, Joseki. Oops. Ah, he has to learn it. It's a start point. <laughs> it's a common Joseki. He's going to have to learn it. So how long has everyone been playing? How long have you guys been playing in chat? Tell me a little bit about your Go career. A few months, three weeks. Cool, cool. <clears throat> Learned rules several years ago. Sounds like <gasps> just today. Oh, welcome to the welcome to the Go World. Here, let me give you some links. Let me give you some links. Uh, just today. Uh, check out check out my How to Play Go section. That should give you the basics. Um, then check out the Classy approach which will also give you the basic strategies. And then on OGS, we want to give you the puzzles, uh, Cho Chicken Life and Death, and these are some beginner level problems. There you go. Uh, and then of course we're playing on that same server. And if you wanna learn how to use OGS, I just made that video today, so that'll be on my YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube.com. Uh, my videos. Uh, we want to go to the playlist. Uh, da -dun -da -dun. Oh, uh, it's it's OGS. I just made this command today. <laughs> I just made the command and I already forgot about it. Just OGS. Dude. Unsettle. So there's some links for you. All right. Uh, weak group. Surround. <laughs> He's probably like, what the crap is this? <laughs> what is this? You could do that? <laughs> This is just getting me control of the center. Uh-oh, he ran with a knight's move. Can I cut? 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 Not quite. 
That sucks. I can go here. I can go here. Ah, what do I want to do? I want to cut, but I can't. I really want to cut, but I can't. Let's just surround. Whatever. I can't cut, guys. I really want to. I really want to cut a knight's move. That sucks. You guys have any uh, cool links for our new Go player, Jan Mark 9 Got any cool links you would like to share with them? Um, so I'm going to treat this center as light. It's a little bit heavy, but it's hard to for him to attack, I think. I hope. Uh, actually, let's go here and like lightly attack this. These puzzles are sweet. <laughs> A few weeks, maybe ten games for that. Cool. Do a little bit of an invasion. Uh, yes, but the queue is closed for today because um, I've been streaming for four hours and I don't want to stream <laughs> for the next ten. <laughs> so unfortunately, the the queue is closed for today. Um, but you can tune in tomorrow or next week. I stream like four or five days a week. Following it notifications. It's really cool. Ooh. Okay. How do I want to punish this? Uh, let's go here. Um, 
Thank you one month. Uh, hold on. What rank are you now again? What rank are you now? No, thank you in a month is easily possible. Ooh, Rebane, thank you for the raid. Um, getting to thank you in a month is possible with enough effort, but what what was your rank again? What was your rank again? I know we just played. Where was you? Where were you at? That wasn't you. That wasn't you. That wasn't you. I don't know. 15Q now. Okay. If you want to get to 10Q in a month, you can. But are you able to put in like 50 hours a week? <laughs> no, you got like 11 people. So it's cool. But thanks, you, thanks for the host. Um... My advice, if you want to get, if you want to improve like five ranks in a month in the double digit Q level, you will need to, uh, you will need to put in, oh, you're, nope, no 50 hours a week. Then I don't know. <laughs> uh, but you can improve a lot. Um, so let's say for anyone that wants to improve, my advice is 100 easy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. 100 easy go problems a day. What does that mean by easy? Go problems that take you about 20 to 30 seconds to solve, but not go problems that take you 10 seconds or less to solve. So you have to be able to read them. If you read it for a minute, you solve it. And this is most of the problems. It doesn't have to be all the problems. Some of the problems can take you longer. Some can take you a little bit faster, but most of the problems need to take you around 20 to 30 seconds. Okay. Do about 100 a day. And that's about four chunks of 25. Four chunks of 25 problems. Uh, so 100 go problems a day. You need to play about 5 to 10 games a day. About 10 to 20 minutes uh, per side. Like Let's say about 15 minutes. Just uh, 10 to 15 minutes per side. 5 to 10 games a day. Uh, if you do like 5 to 7 a, ga a day, that's perfectly fine. Um, that's number 2. Number 3... You need to study your opening, so you need to review probably about two or three pro games at ps.wall theory. I sent that link earlier. Uh, pro games with your opening. You need to review about two or three of those a day. Then you need to watch some YouTube videos. Mine, Batsko, Haley, any of them. You need to watch basic videos and game reviews of your level or of us playing against your level so any of these teaching game videos that i do any of uh bats goes back to basic videos that he does uh game review videos watch probably two hours of those a day and that was number four i think and that should be about maybe anywhere from six to ten hours of your day <laughs> Uh, so 100 go problems, five to 10, five to 10 games, depending on what your stamina can do, uh, but a minimum of five games a day, um, study pro games with your opening two to three a day and watch videos for how to play at your level for about two hours a day. That's four things. Do that for a month and you will improve very, very quickly okay trust me you can you can get to one don in a year or less doing that for every single day um at best you can take one day off a week for rest um maybe a day and a half like one day like on saturday maybe you just relax and play some uh play some games casually with uh and just um and not study a lot but you just play games for fun but you still got to put in at least some effort um but uh, what do I want to do here? Let's do this. Um, but if you did that for a year, you would get really strong really fast. <laughs> 14 out of 15 games were a draw. Oh my gosh. That's insane.
Okay, so I have opinions on board sizes. The five to seven games, if you are stronger than like 18Q, you should be playing on 19 by 19. 13 by 13 is really good if you want to practice in game if you're stronger than 18Q. If you are weaker than 18Q, I recommend 100 9 by 9 and 200 13 by 13 to improve your fighting and then play another 100 19 by 19 to get um, used to those. Hello. <laughs> hey, Batsko. <laughs> how are you? Uh, how strong would you get? Your basics would be very strong, but your reading would suck. <laughs> like, really bad. Uh, you would understand the Colossi approach inside and out, but your, <laughs> your reading would be terrible. <laughs> oh, man. You would know the Colossi approach, that's for sure. Anyway, what I recommended is if you really want to study hardcore, okay? That was hardcore study. Uh, not everyone can do that, and that's perfectly fine. You can improve at your own pace. Uh, as long as you do, like, a percentage of that every week, like a small percentage of that, you should be fine. Um, but what I recommended was, like, hardcore. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> gonna be pretty well rested Whew. Um, how many people do you know that know what Go is? <laughs> um, that's like asking what Go isn't popular in general. We don't have any famous streamers. I've actually considered hiring a popular Twitch streamer and teaching them how to play Go, like paying them money to let me teach them how to play Go on their Twitch stream so that way thousands of people will see Go. Um, but I don't know if anyone would do it, and I don't know how successful that would be for growing Go. And it'd also be very expensive. Like, for example, we just go to, like, browse. Um, holy crap. And we just go to someone, like, playing Fortnite. All right? That's just a popular game right now. And we just find someone that has a thousand views, thousand viewers. Um... And I just find someone with like thousands of views. And we say, hey, if I pay you a hundred bucks, will you come play, uh, will you stream this game for an hour and let me teach you how to play it? Uh, maybe with a friend or something. Uh, Day9 did try to learn Go once and I offered him free lessons <laughs> if he continued to play and he didn't want, he didn't like, I guess he didn't like Go or something, I don't know. I offered, I did message Day9. I was like, hey, I will give you free lessons if you keep streaming Go. Uh, all right, because we there was thousands of people watching Go, um, but I have considered that. I haven't actually messaged anyone because I don't know if it'd be worth it, and it's a little high risk for me right now to spend like a hundred or two hundred dollars um, just to let someone just to teach someone how to play Go uh, and not get any return from it. So for me, it's a little high risk to do that. Um, but it is something that I'm considering doing in the future. I could get it for 100 bucks. Oh, couldn't get it for 100 bucks. Yeah, that's another thing. I don't even know if they would respond to me for 100 bucks. 
like the popular ones, I don't even think they would respond for only $100. I would have to find the semi-popular ones. Like maybe someone in like the 900 views or 800 views, maybe they would do it. But the people up here, like 64,000 views, uh, 13,000 views, 7,000 views, they, they would not do that for 100 bucks. Yeah, when it clicks, you're like, yes, this game's fun. <sighs> My wife didn't get off work at four. So maybe she gets off work at five. Uh, let's look at chess. How many views do they have? Yeah, this is why I don't want to pay chess players, okay? I feel like we're going to catch up to chess. I mean, we won't, ha we won't have this many streams, of course. But the people that are playing it don't have that many views either. Like, I have as many views as, like, these guys right here. Um, yeah. I'm, like, in this section already. Like, right here. So this is why I wasn't considering hiring a chess player. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right? <laughs> that was a big thing with Go that, oh, the AIs beat chess, but <laughs> but they can't beat us. Go is just way too hard for the computers. Uh, and then I was like, oh, yeah. Have you heard of Google? Have you heard of AlphaGo? Google's AI bot. Have you heard of DeepMind uh, learning and stuff? Uh, well, that was utilized and practiced in Go. Oh, crap. No, I didn't want to resign. Crap. I, dang it, I didn't want him to resign. I should have resigned, guys. I should have resigned. I didn't want him to resign. I should resign. I shouldn't let my student resign. Um, all right, let me know when you're back in the chat. Random badger. Ooh, her, her, hurricane, hurricane, just, <laughs> that was hard to say. Hurricane just subscribed on YouTube. Alrighty, so you, I think you played very well uh, for 14Q. You have uh, very good combinations and very good shapes. Yeah, I should have, I, I agree. I should have resigned first, though I was too busy talking. Um, so for this opening, if you guys watched uh, my star point video recently, I talked about how the star points want influence rather than territory. So that is why I think this move is better than uh, this for utilizing the star point's uh, effectiveness. 
because this is very territorial and flat and it's very easy to reduce. Uh, so I feel like it doesn't utilize a star point like it's supposed to, but it's considered, I think it's a, just a bit old fashioned. Uh, so I prefer playing this move when you have a star point and uh, uh, I like this side better than uh, this side because I think that I feel like this is a little good for white or for your opponent because it's very easy to reduce. Uh, then we go into a very territorial game uh, where I live very easily on the right and you have no moyo or at least a very uh, a very flat moyo because I can reduce. Um, so it's hard to build a moyo over here uh, and it's a very territorial game and since white has Komi um, I think I prefer white. Uh, would the AJ help advertise streamers? That's that's a conversation. Uh, basically, the AGA doesn't have a policy. Yeah. The AGA doesn't have a good policy, and they don't feel like making one. Or they don't... They don't like playing favorites. So their own inability to play favorites is holding them back from making a policy to advertise streamers. So they don't... They like streamers, and they like the idea of them, but... They don't want to play favorites, and so they can't just advertise one or two that send them a request because then they would they would uh, be under the percep uh, perception of um, uh, playing hi Wiccan Wolf. Uh, they would be under the perception of playing favorites, and they don't want to do that. Uh, and they don't have a policy written out for how they want to handle advertising streams and stuff. And no one's made a policy for it, and it's just a bunch of politics. And it's just not going to happen. Like, as far as I know, nothing's going to happen with that. Um, yeah. Uh, I think Batsko and I have both tried to get the AGA to support uh, live streams. Even just, like, advertising us in the e-journal or something would be nice. But it's just not going to... It's not very... Uh, it's not going to happen, as far as I know. If it does, great. I would love their support. <laughs> but I just don't see it happening for... Twitch streamers. Uh, this... <laughs> Hurricane! You forgot the I in your YouTube name. You're Hurricane. You're Hurricane. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. I think they... I don't know. I don't know. Watching, subscribing. Uh, I was on early, so it was 9Q for a few months, but after hiatus... Ah, that's why I thought you were strong for 14Q. I've sent them emails. Uh, I have sent them emails. Okay, I have talked to the I have talked to the e-journal guy. All right, I have helped them stream a Go Congress. I've assisted them with game review or uh, relaying games and stuff. I have assisted them with social media. Uh, so I've done stuff for the AGA. Uh, so yeah. I mean, I just... I don't like how the AGA is handled. I think there's too many politics. Uh, and too much old-fashioned mindsets. Uh, they need young blood in there. And they just don't have it. Uh, anyway, that's just... That's just <laughs> another topic. Um... All right, so here the Joseki is actually to connect. I connect here, 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 here. This is Joseki. Um, and then maybe you could think about developing the bottom or maybe playing a jump. Uh, maybe do this and then this. Uh, maybe exchange um, that, that, and then maybe this. Maybe, I don't know. Something to something to build. Um, but anyway, this is Joseki. That's Joseki. This is a little bit overplay. Did a little bit. Uh, take this. No, it's fine. Cause I I didn't have time to play this anyway. Uh, here you want to do. I felt like that was big. Maybe you don't want to. <gasps> oh, new patron! Thank you so much. Zel uh, Zaslan, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And don't forget to send in those games to get reviewed. I will be reviewing uh, four of your games a month from now on if you send them in. 
So don't forget to do that, and thank you so much. Ooh, fun! Thank you, Assassin. Uh, so you, uh, don't forget that you can send in four games, and I will review them on Patreon. Uh, and oh, since I believe that charges you immediately, so that's four games for October. So for the next like six days, you have four games. Um, but they do expire because they I can't carry over game reviews because I will just get way overloaded. So you have six days left to claim the four games for this month. Uh, so just send me four games. It doesn't matter. It could be yours. It could be a friend's. Whatever. Just <laughs> if you want them, get them. <laughs> but uh, once January first hits. Then it, uh, the next cycle will happen. Or not January. I said January. I don't even know what month it is, guys. Uh, once November hits, it will cycle over. Um, yeah, that's just because I have that. I do that because I will get way overloaded. And it'll be way too complicated to keep track of how many game reviews I owe someone if they save up. Like, I, I would just end up owing someone, like, hundreds of games. And I just would never be able to catch up. Uh, and that would be too difficult. So, uh Private lessons do not expire, but game reviews do at the end of the month. Uh, anyway, can't wait to review your games. Uh, okay, so here, after you exchange this, I think exchanging this would be good locally um, because that's a big corner. But I don't know. It's up to you. Hey, you wick and wolf. How are you? Mm -hmm. uh, a little higher level move against this is to play here because if white takes the outside black has a stone here and here okay maybe it's different because you kind of let me break your position here but normally uh the influence is canceled out by two th the two black stones so black doesn't want to do this or white doesn't want to do this so white would normally get a base first and then you could play this way and it'd be a little bit better but maybe on this board it doesn't work. Ah. Yeah, I think because you let me break this position, maybe it doesn't work. Uh, in that case, you could go here. Maybe. And do this. Uh, but I'm worried about what happens if I do this. Maybe that's good for white because, again, of this corner, I can actually <laughs> uh, The normal Josekis don't work because of this corner. Uh, this corner kind of broke the top side. So now all the Josekis don't work. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Oh, well, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. It's a very small thing. I did this to get control of the center. Uh, this knight's move was very annoying. I really wanted to cut it. I really, really, really wanted to cut this. But, but... But I cannot do that. I will die. <laughs> keep it simple. Yeah, and go, let's keep it simple. That is a very good go strategy as well. Uh, yeah, can't cut that knight's move. And then I was like, okay, let's, let's like cut you here. But as soon as I do something like this and surround you, you surround my freaking group. And it's very annoying. Yeah, I can live, but it's eh. I didn't know if this was good enough because there's all kinds of cuts, so I didn't like it. Maybe it's okay. Maybe this one was okay. Maybe I just misjudged it. Um, oh, that's right. I also can, was looking at this. I thought if I did that, maybe you could do this, and then this stone was pointless. I was reading a bunch of stuff, and I just couldn't find a way to cut you. So I was like, okay, whatever, screw it. I'm just going to get control of the center. Light attack on the left, just get control of the center, and then I have more points. Because, oh crap. Yeah, because the top left was good for me, I have more points. So, whatever. By bullying K14 group. No, I completely made the, I made the center Dami. So, specifically, so you couldn't do that. So you should have went for territory. Like, this is a territory game now. So here, here, and then here. This might be overplay. Uh, just get your forest moves. 
Pitch forcing moves and build. Just build it up. Build it up. This was Gote. So this looked like you were defending your weak group. Which, if you're defending a weak group, fine. That's cool. But I didn't feel that much pressure from it. Uh, yeah, this is a calm move. Do not cut this. Cutting that is overplay. Cutting that is overplay. You lost your position right here because of it. Um, you can do this and then that. Uh, and that's fine. And if I change direction, you can severely attack me and put me in bad shape. Um, or you could do this. It's another idea. But you do not want to cut this knight's move. <laughs> it broke your position. <laughs> it broke this position right here. Yeah. I really hurt. And then you had to peep. Ugh. Uh, rather than jump and letting me peep, I think it's better to play uh, this move. That way, if I do this, you have all these forcing moves. That's ugly. Holy crap. Just here. Uh, yeah, you have more forcing moves against this corner if you need it. Uh, if White tries to go here, you can play a Tiger's Mouth, which is very strong. So I think uh, this might be a little bit better defense. Maybe. But I thought this was very easy for White. Jump. You're trying to cut me and surround me now, but because the A stone's dead, this bottom group's pretty much alive. It's pretty much alive. Uh, this one, I was debating if it was a mistake or not. Because if I go like right here, and then right here, maybe it's not a, okay i don't think it's a mistake okay it's not a mistake i i considered it i was like i guess i was trying to visualize that and i was, wasn't sure but okay after playing it out it's not a mistake no this is sabaki okay this is like this has that direction that direction this direction it has like three ways to run there's no way for this group to die and also there's a lot of aji at a so there's no way for this group to die Here, I just cut off your cutting stones. Once I cut off your cutting stones, it makes defending myself very, uh, very easy. Don't cut when you're weak. Just attack the whole group. If you try to cut when you're weak and have bad liberties, it's just going to backfire. Save the cut for later or just don't cut at all because you cannot cut when you're weak. It's very difficult. Yeah, I here I just... I just read out how to kill you. Um, once you played here and I played this move, I had already like read out how to kill you. <laughs> I had already read all this out like when I played that move. Um, yeah, I just killed the cutting stones. That's honestly this is why I didn't resign was because here I had already read out killing the cutting stones. So the rest of it was just me following through. And then when we started playing territory again, then I was going to resign. was be Because I was going to count, see the difference, I'm ahead, I'll resign. I didn't expect you to resign because this to me was like um, just running the course. I already knew this result in my head. So I was just like going, going with the flow and I just forgot to resign. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to actually win the game. So, uh, my bad. <laughs> but that was just me going with the flow. Um, all right. So this game, I think, uh, lots of Josekis. I think try to play more Moyo with star points. I mean, I made a video over this. I think star points should be more Moyo oriented, and this is a very territorial game. Uh, so I showed you a few shapes and stuff. Yeah, I think it's game over. I agree that it's game over. I should have just resigned first, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I agree that it's game over after those cutting stones die. Uh, you're not wrong. I just should have resigned first. Um, anyway. Um, 
Yeah, so I wouldn't play such a territorial game um, with star points as black. Uh, I think I think Comey's too large, and I think it's not doing what the star points want. But uh, also, there's a lot of shapes. Like this area, I broke your shape. This area, I broke your shape. Um, I think these two areas were the main focus. Just the attack and fence. Uh, I'm trying to think about basics. You had pretty good basics. Your game was pretty well balanced. Uh, so maybe just improve one thing at a time. Just work on one thing at a time. Work on your opening in Joseki's. Uh, do your life and death problems. Just improve. Just improve your game. Just start with the opening. Joseki's. How you approach the middle game. Your attack and defense. Life and death. Just take it one step at a time. Because I think your game's pretty well balanced. Um, so pretty. What that means is you're. You have a very balanced game. But it also means you don't have a main issue that I can just tell you to fix. Um, what would resigning changing? Uh, so I resign so my student doesn't feel so bad about when they have to press the resign button. I usually resign so they don't have to. Because sometimes it feels really bad to resign. So I mostly do it so my student feels better about themselves and doesn't feel so bad about the game. Um... I mean, it doesn't always work, and it's, it's only a very minor thing. I do it just to make my students happier a little bit and make it um, just easier on them, I guess. Uh, it's not that important, uh, but I like to do it t just for that little that little edge, that little thing. Um, so, yeah, I, if I were you, uh, the biggest thing I would work on is don't let your positions break like this. These two areas, your positions just got broken apart. So really work on um, why that you chose to let that happen. Uh, keep your stuff connected and defended. Uh, um, there's that. And then I would think just start with your opening. Start studying an opening. Pick an opening and start studying it. I mean, you're never going to learn all the openings until you just pick one. So pick one. Nirensei, Sanrensei, Chinese, Kobayashi... Uh, dual three fours with the shamari, dual three fours with the mini Chinese, micro Chinese. Just pick an opening, uh, and then, eh, they'll lose enough games and go that losing against me or not losing against me won't affect that that great. In my opinion, this is my opinion. Uh, this is just my opinion to my st teaching style. I mean, um, yeah, I was just explaining why I do it. It might be right, it might be wrong, but this is just my teaching style. Um, so yeah, I would feel like uh, starting with an opening, review pro games, learn the Josegis, learn that opening inside and out, uh, and then just start working on the middle game one step at a time. Keeping your groups connected, staying strong, keeping a base, uh, and then unsettling and attacking surrounding for profit. Uh, just take it one step at a time, and I think you can improve. Could you recommend a competitive study curriculum to follow, so to speak? Like, who I should aim to play, or how much I should aim to play, etc. Uh, I said that earlier. I don't know if you're listening. It depends on how much time you have. Like, everything's relative to the person. So when you're talking about how much you should study, how much uh, you should put into it per day, that is all depending on the person. Uh, I can tell you what you need. You need to play games. You need to study your opening. You need to do lots and lots of hundreds of Go problems. You need to watch uh, videos and lectures. Um, you need to review your games. Uh, and maybe you need to get, read a couple books. You have to divide that up however you can. Earlier I said my ideal curriculum. Yeah, you need to challenge yourself. You need to put a little bit higher to where you're putting in at least some work. You will only get as much out of go as you put in. So you need to set it to right above your limit. Where you, like, not not your limit, but right above where you're comfortable. You need to be slightly uncomfortable with the amount of effort. Uh, so that way you're just putting in just enough effort. But you can give yourself the weekend off. Don't worry about that. Even I do that. Um, but my hardcore 
super dedicated, want to improve, super fast plan. Uh, 100 go problems a day in four chunks of 25. Um, five to five to 10, 15 minutes per side rated games against your level. Um, review each of those games. Uh, do to review two or three pro games on a real board. Replay the moves uh, with pro games of your openings. Only the first 50 moves. Don't worry about past that. Review the first 50 moves, like two or three pro games of your opening. Look up the Josekis you don't know and learn the Josekis in your opening uh, and how to use your opening. Um, and then watch videos, YouTube tutorials and lectures um, for your level and how strong players play against your level and how they... How how do I and Bats go like play against your level? Hi, Mrs. Clausius. Hello. You're no, just no, in no, time. I'm streaming. I'm, uh, I'm streaming. Um, I have one more. Everyone. What do you do? I'm okay with working. Like when the store is closed now. Well, 